Hi, my name is Andy, and this is a video about Node.js, uh, uh, trying to explain what it is. Okay, what is Node.js? Well, it is a JavaScript engine, a way of running JavaScript. Uh, it's a set of libraries, and it is going to blow your mind if you are not used to the way uh, uh, style of programming it uses. Okay, so it's a JavaScript engine. Uh, if you install it and you type Node, you get into an interactive environment. You can type familiar JavaScript things like console.log, and it will print out what you said. Uh, you can do sums like 2 plus 3 equals 5, and you can do uh, things that only JavaScript let you do, like checking whether 0 is the same thing as the empty string and finding that it is. Um, okay, so it's built on V8, which is the engine which is part of uh, the Chrome browser, uh, which is known for being reasonably fast. Um, uh, in my code at work, uh, it runs our JavaScript unit tests only a little bit faster than the Rhino uh, virtual machine. So uh, my impression is with quite how fast it is, it has gone down a bit uh, since I realized that. Okay, so it's a JavaScript engine with uh, a, a module system that predates the AMD module system that you may have seen. In JavaScript, it also supports the AMD module system. If you don't know what the AMD module system is, don't worry about it. Um, it if you are a big fan of the AMD module system, you can use it. Although, to be honest, the way Node does it uh, uh, natively seems a bit simpler to me. So basically, you get hold of a module by saying require, uh, and then you get something that you can put into a variable. I call that variable weekday. Uh, weekday is a library which will uh, tell you the name of a day of the week. So uh, this little program gets hold of the weekday library, uh, calls the function weekday, which it got, which is the weekday library, provides uh, the command line argument you passed in, gets back an answer, and then prints out the answer. And when you run that program, you pass in five. Uh, you find out that today is Friday. Hurrah! Uh, Node is also a huge collection of libraries, many of which are very small um, uh, and specialized, uh, and you can find them all on uh, the NPM website. Uh, there are, there were, when I took this screenshot, there were 77,997 modules on there. I'm sure there's over 78,000 now. So there are lots of them. Uh, most of them are really uh, small, and they can even be a single function. So that weekday library we saw that was just one function, but packaged up as a library that you can reuse somewhere else. Uh, here's another example. There's a function called concat array, which takes... Uh, let me just show you what it does. Um, you get hold of the concat array module. I've put it in a variable called ca. You've got an array with two strings in it. If you call concat array, pass in the, the, the string jumbo and the array, which has got shrimp and tron in it, it will print out jumbo shrimp, jumbo tron. Right? It puts stuff on the beginning of the stuff in the array. That's all it does. It's a whole module just for that. Um, they're small, uh, and I think that's good. Uh, there is also some uh, 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 much larger bits of code available, um, which are very powerful. Uh, the most notable one, there are loads of things that you, um, you may well be interested in. Uh, probably the most notable is Express, which is a framework for making websites. So if you get hold of the Express library, you make an app by calling this function Express, which you got back from the require. Um, then you can make a little web application by by calling the get method on app, which says um, do something when the user gets the, um, the slash URL. Uh, and all we're doing is sending back hello world. So when you uh, go to, um, so then when you call app.listen, that means that the program starts listening on port 3000, it's an HTTP uh, server, so when you go to localhost 3000 in your web browser, you will see the words hello world. So that program, which is quite small, has written a little uh, web server. Okay, so um, one of the great things about Express is that it's built on Connect and uh, for the purpose of this conversation, all you need to know about Connect is that it means that you can support middleware. Middleware are little bits of code that um, sit in a chain of request handling logic, which you don't really have to worry about, um, which do clever things. So, for example, if you're making uh, our Hello World program, but you want to have uh, HTTP basic authentication, 
uh, on it, so you can only get Hello World said to you if you authenticate with a username or password. It pops up in the browser. Uh, this is the program that does it. The only line that we've added is app.use express.basic.auth, and we've given a username and password hard-coded here, but that's just an example. Um, and what that means is that um, when these requests come into your web application, before getting to your function that returns Hello World, they run through all the bits of middleware that you've uh, kind of set up by calling this use function. Uh, the one that we've set up here does HTTP basic authentication. You don't have to worry about it, it's just done for you. So it's a nice little um, way of getting, of separating out functionality in uh, web applications. Uh, this idea of middleware is really powerful. You can do, especially good for things like security, but all kinds of other stuff as well. Okay, so let's get on to why Node is going to blow your mind if you haven't written code like this before. Um, the basic summary of how Node works is uh, is the little catchphrase they have on their website, which is that everything runs in parallel except your code. What this means in practice is something that you'll be a bit familiar with if you've written JavaScript in a browser, which is that instead of writing a program that says do A, do B, do C, what you see is what you do is you write a program saying uh, do A, and when you've finished, run this other bit of code. And it's often called asynchronous programming. Uh, basically, um, instead of handling lots and lots of requests using threads, uh, and each thread has its own request, what Node does is asynchronous programming, which is this stuff based on callbacks. So every time you do something, instead of just saying do it and then waiting for it and then doing something else, you say when you've finished doing it, call this callback. And what that means is that the Node server is free to run a whole load of other people's JavaScript while it's waiting for, you, for your code uh, to wait for something slow, for example, reading something from the disk. Uh, so the uh, pros for this uh, approach is that uh, it, it does seem to be really scalable. So um, if you set up a node server, it will use a massive amount of your CPU, so long as you're, you're writing a program. Uh, it can run lots and lots of simultaneous requests, um, and yet the code you're writing is completely single-threaded. You don't have to worry about uh, threads, because there are no threads as far as you're concerned. You just provide callbacks um, and a load of stuff happening in parallel with you without you having to worry about it. Some big companies have replaced Java um, web applications with Node ones and found a significant performance improvement. That obviously your mileage may vary. Cons, uh, it's really hard to understand the code if you're not used to it. And you can get used to it and there are ways of making the code easier to understand. Um, and I think this style of program will get more popular and we'll get better at it and better techniques for making it easier to understand. But at the moment, it can be pretty hard to understand. So, um, as I was saying, everything is asynchronous. What that means is everything is a callback. So instead of just doing something and waiting for it, you provide a callback that, that gets called when something has been done. So, for example, in this program, we've got hold of the FS module, which does file handling type stuff. We can call the function read file on the FS module, which I'm doing on the last line of the program. I'm saying, read in this file, myfile.txt. And when you've read it in, call the function do something. And what the function do something does is prints out uh, the contents of the file unless an error happens. So this is a pattern you will see in Node, um, especially older Node code, that the first argument to the function is an error. And if that uh, argument is null or undefined, then there wasn't an error, and you can carry on. But if it's if it that um, if that error thing is uh, defined and not null, um, then you should handle an error, not even you normally do. Uh, so uh, it, cause it, it's because exceptions won't work. Because if an exception f uh, flew out of that read file uh, function, you'd never get into the do something code. And it's the do something code that's supposed to handle the result of running that function. Okay, so um, that was that was how you do it if you had a separate function called do something, but often in node code what you'll see is that the callback is actually defined in line. So this is exactly the same code we call read file, we provide a callback function, but that callback function is right there in the call to read file. Now, this is something JavaScript can do, it's really cool, it can be abused. Okay, so pat the patterns for working with this is basically don't uh, throw an exception if something goes wrong. Don't return your answer. Instead, call a callback, providing either what went wrong or what went right. So imagine we wanted to write a program called cp.js, which copies a file. You give it the file you want to copy and the new file name, 
and he wanted to print out how many bytes it copied. Um, well, what we're going to do is uh, the, what the, the main body of this program is going to be is going to call our call a function called copy file, which we're going to write in a second. It's going to take in the two command line arguments, uh, and it was, and then you're going to call this copy file function, which we're going to write in a minute, uh, and provide a callback to that function. So what I'm saying is we're writing our own function called copy file, but we're still going to follow the same pattern that uh, node code takes. If you don't follow this pattern, you immediately get tangled up because everything else is following that pattern and your code just won't work properly. So you're, you need to just get into it, bite the bullet, start writing your code in this way. Write your functions so that they don't throw a return, they call a callback. Here we're providing a callback which just logs an error if there was an error and prints out the uh, number of bytes copied uh, uh, if there wasn't an error and the number of bytes copied gets passed in as that second argument to the callback length. So how would we write the copy file function? Well, we're going to write it like this. It takes in uh, the, in the input file and the output file name and a callback to call. What it does is it calls read file in the FS module. Uh, reads in that in file and you provide a callback to the read file function saying what to do. Um, if there was an error, we just call our own callback passing that error through. Uh, if there wasn't an error, we call write file and we pass in the output file name pass in the data that we're going to write, which is, of course, the data that we read in from the read file. So the callback, the read, read file function calls our callback function, providing the data of the file. And we're using, we're passing that data into the write file function to write out into the new file, so that's why it's a copy. And then we're providing a callback to the write file function, which, again, if there's something, if something goes wrong, we call our callback uh, with the error. Otherwise, we call callback that was originally passed into the copy file function, passing in null meaning there was no error, and uh, the length of the data that we've been given. And then you have to close the various curly brackets at the end of the program. So basically what I'm saying is, if you write your own function, write it in the same style. It takes a callback uh, and calls it to provide a response rather than throwing or returning a value. And if you write code like this, you will rapidly find yourself in a situation where the end of your function looks a bit like this, and that is called callback hell. And it can be really hard, really hard to understand the code. And even those, even those two nested uh, calls that we made were really difficult. So how do you handle this? Well, here are some tips for writing code in Node. Uh, tip number one, don't forget that you're writing code. Um, just because it's Node.js, just because it's JavaScript, just because it's very flexible. Uh, don't forget your basics, which are write short functions, uh, write tests and test your code, and give things names um, if they have any meaning, and then you much more like to understand what they do later. And that's my only tip for writing Node.js code. Um, if you want to get more videos on all kinds of different programming topics, uh, hopefully there's a subscribe button on your screen. Uh, uh, otherwise, go to the um, YouTube URL at the top there. You can follow me on Twitter to find um, links to videos, links to blog posts mostly, occasional retweets. Uh, look at my blog for information about open source projects I'm working on. Uh, I stick my videos up on there, and also uh, little bits of code that I've been working on, or problems that I'm solving, often in my on my Linux machine. Um, if you want to look at uh, open source projects that I'm writing, uh, have a look at artificialworlds.net and see you next time.